to get everybody to just to get everyone to pop their name and their organization into the chat function there just so that we can get an idea of who all is on board today um and just for the duration of the session we'll just have everyone on mute with the exception of those who are presenting so if anybody has any connection problems today i think the best idea is just to log yourself off and then just rejoin the zoom um we have the tech team on board today is Chrissy Havlin, who's right next to me. He's the finance and systems team lead for Agewell. Um, so thank you very much, Chrissy, for all your help. Um, he's looking after the presentations today um, and he'll be keeping me right. So um, just for anybody who wishes to tweet about the session today, you'll see on the slides there at the bottom, we've got hashtag rapid rundown. And we also have hashtag connect north MEA. So if you want to go to Twitter, you can do that too. Um, also just want to make everybody aware, just to make the session a wee bit more fun today, and just to make sure everybody is listening, um, we're going to have prizes. So um you're going to have to keep your eyes peeled to see if you can see the Connect North logo. So on your screen at the minute, you should be able to see the Connect North logo and it's on the left hand side. So when I look at this, I see a tree. Some people say they see a wee person with their arms up. So that's the logo that you're looking out for. And if you see that, then it's fastest fingers first. So type Connect North into the chat box as quick as you can. And you could be winning yourself one of these. Oh, it's not coming up. Look. So I know Christmas is nearly here. So we've got one of these, our we gold reindeers from Lint. So there's three of these up for grabs today. Okay. Um, unfortunately today we won't have any time for questions, but um, all the contact details are gonna be on the slides, the second slide. So if you've got any questions at all, we would encourage you just to go to those contact details and contact the people directly. Okay. Now you'll all be delighted to know that we would really love to get a picture a photo of everyone here today and this is Jenny's idea so we're going to have to blame Jenny um, she um, she suggested because I'm a dance mum my two girls dance that we all do jazz hands so I'm going to hand over to Chrissy our technical lead and he is going to take a picture but we all have to do our jazz hands so Chrissy hi everybody so um, this is going to be very very technical I'm just going to do a screen for a uh, grab of the uh, session. So because it's split up over a couple of screens, I'm going to have to do it in a couple of goes. So every time after three, we'll just go one, two, three, jazz hands, all right? And then we'll do one, two, three, jazz hands again. So if you want to be in the picture, keep your camera on. If you don't, turn it off. Um, and someone is joining, so that give me two seconds, I'll let them in. There we go. So let me get myself ready. Everybody after three, one, two, three, jazz hands. Keep it going. Keep going. Keep it going. It's just freezing. Keep it going. <laughs> oh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, it's not working. Oh, no. <laughs> it won't work. Keep going. Let's try again. <laughs> I think you're having a I'm. I'm not. There we go. There. I think that worked that time. Brilliant. I'm just going to hand back over to Kavita then. Thank you very much. That was the longest jazz hands ever. <laughs> um. So finally, just before we start the presentations today, um. I just want to take a moment to clarify that I am a Connect North Link worker. Um, I won't go into too much detail because we have Eugene, who is another Connect North Link worker in the Mid-Ulster area. He's going to be on later just to tell you a bit more about Connect North. But really, in essence, it's a support service run by the Trust. Um, includes link workers both within the Trust and within the community. I am specifically based in the community, working and collaborating with Agewell. And we help support people um, over the age of 18 with their health and their well-being. 
And really, um, that is it. It is now over to you guys, the presentations. So just to make you aware, I have a very technical process here. Um, we are timing the presentation, so it's two minutes you get. And I've got Jenny on board with the timer. She's going to be in the background, frantically waving um, whenever you get to your uh, one minute 50. So we also have Chrissy who will pop up a slide that says 10 seconds remaining. So when you see that slide that says 10 seconds remaining, you know you need to wrap it up and we'll be moving on to the next presentation. OK, so ready to go. Um, we're going to move on to our first presenter, which is Elaine from the Macular Society. Over to you, Elaine. Thank you. Hello, I am one of two regional managers in Northern Ireland for the Macular Society. And our mission is to beat the fear and isolation of macular disease through research, advice, and support. One of the many ways we do that is to provide monthly support groups. And in Northern Ireland, we have 21 active support groups for people who have macular disease or for their friends and family. It's a great place to connect with other people who understand what you're going through and also to learn about the latest research and all kinds of other resources that can help you as you're dealing with sight loss. We have speakers coming in on a regular basis. The groups meet monthly in various venues around Northern Ireland. And um, it's a great place to really just be with others and get a good cup of tea, but also learn about what you're dealing with with macular disease. We also have befriending services that are provided by volunteers who have macular disease themselves and uh, would be anywhere in Northern Ireland who will pick up the phone and call you and just be able to have a chat about everyday life, but also about the various challenges that you might be facing um, when you're dealing with sight loss. And then from our central offices in England, we provide free counseling and emotional support calls. And we also have um, online or phone training, including our really helpful skills for seeing course that helps you to make the most of what you have left of your site through peripheral vision and that kind of thing. On our website, which is macularsociety.org, we have a wealth of resources, webinars, and information. Um, and we also have a helpline, which you can see the numbers here. If you are interested in a support group, you can contact me at 07852885925, and we can connect you with a support group in your area. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elaine. That was really difficult going first. So thank you very much for that. Now we are over to Rhonda, who's going to talk to us about AEL Larn. OK, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rhonda Duddy, and I'm a personal development mentor with Access Employment, um, more known as AEL. What we do here at Larn is we have a social enterprise and we have five different business areas which provide in-house work experience for adults with and without additional needs. So we have four different support programs, which are Prosper, Day Opportunities, Transitions and Life. Um, underneath, you can see there is a description of each of the programs. The Prosper program is about progressionary routes for adults uh, to go into work. Day Opportunities is a day based service, which is a referral through the trust, the Northern Trust. Transitions is a skill based program, um, whether you're still at school through a special school or um, you have just transitioned out of school and are looking to build skills um, to progress into the workplace. And the LIFE programme is more for those um, individuals who are wanting to get a bit more experience with independent living. They may not necessarily go into the world of work, but they need to um, perfect those skills, I suppose, to be able to live on their own. Um, we also have a social club as well for anybody 16 years and above. There's no upper edge limit, I don't think. Um, and you don't need to attend AEL on a programme. So those guys meet every two Tuesday or two Thursday nights um, here at AEL. And they have social activities and then they have items as well. So it's a safe place for people to go uh, and they're not judged with um, any additional need that they have. So all of our programs are um, integrated. There's no segregation. And um, we have so many different ability levels and capability levels. 
and um, the guides get to have their work experience in house with us they get to have a mentor and they get to uh, work with the job coach every day uh, to get a, a massive range of skills and experiences and opportunities here um, I am the personal development mentor on the pro on the Prosper program. The head of services is Lorraine Black, who would be over all of the services. Um, and if you need any any further information, you can give us a wee shout. That is wonderful, Rhonda. Thank you so much. Right, that's us moving on to Northern Highland Chest Heart and Stroke, and it's Karina. Hi, thank you. So. Um... Hi, at Chest Heart and Stroke, it's our mission to prevent chest heart and stroke conditions and to support the people affected by them in Northern Ireland. Um, we have different directorates that help us to achieve that mission. So myself, I come from the Public Health Directorate, but we also have um, the uh, Corporate Directorate, which includes PR and fundraising. And we have our care services team who actually look after those impacted by those conditions. So going back more to the public health directorate that I fall into, I'm within the community health promotion team. We also have a schools health promotion team and a workplace health promotion team. And in addition to that, we have our research team and our policy team who, again, help towards our mission. Within the community health promotion team, our strategic priorities are to reduce health inequalities by developing programmes for people and communities with greatest needs. And we want to do that by partnering with people and organisations who need our services and share our common priorities. To give you an example of what we can offer for your community, if you're interested, we would provide the likes of health checks as well as talks. And there's different packages available. And the best way to find out more about that is to get in contact with us to discuss the needs of your organisation or your community and one of our managers or myself, depending on who's relevant. If it's something for Ballymena and specifically Harryville, Bally or Ballykeel areas of Ballymena, I would love to talk to you more about that. But if it's something more general for Northern Ireland, then one of the community health promotion managers would be more than, or sorry, one of the health promotion managers in general would be happy to help you with that. And on the last side, as you're aware, that our contact details will be there. So that's me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karina. That was great. Um, now we are moving on to First Connect and we've got Sam from AGNI. Hello, everybody. And thanks, Kavita, for the opportunity to come and share a little bit about First Connect. I was wondering how I could get it into two minutes, so I thought I would use a case study. So I want to draw your attention to the photograph. Uh, the gentleman beside me, his name's Ralph. Ralph's one of our group volunteers and really when Ralph was, uh, when he was referred to to First Connect, he was going through a very difficult place, caring for his wife who had dementia and really his own physical and emotional well-being was at a really low point. But we were able to gain to give him the emotional support, we were able to link him to benefits and then we started to see Ralph come into his own because he linked into our groups. And we have groups right throughout the Northern Trust area supporting people who are going through difficult times. You know, carers tell us that they are existing. They're not living. And when we think about that, because their caring role takes over really their whole life, Ralph joined our groups and immediately he took to it like a duck to water. And he's been such a great asset to our group. He uses his own experiences, his difficult times, times when he felt that perhaps he maybe couldn't go on to support another person. And again, he's there. Every week we have different activities. We have uh, different speakers. We have got funding from arts care from different people. But the main thing is, folks, is bringing people together. And it's lovely to see all the different organisations together because working Individually, we can make a small difference, but if we work collectively, we can make such a difference. And again, people like Ralph have come into our group from a very difficult place, but through them being supported, being listened to, and then they can go out and support other people. And on our last slide, we have a couple of photographs of our group activities. And if you have known anybody who could benefit from, it, from the service, contact details are on the slide there. So thank you very much thanks thank you so much sam that was lovely to hear a case study like that it's a, a good way of telling us about your service so thank you again um we're going to hear now from valerie at the alzheimer's society 
Uh, I'm Valerie Guthrie, Dementia Advisor for Antrim Valamina. We have advisors throughout the whole of Northern Ireland and we provide face-to-face -face and telephone support uh, and information to carers and people with a diagnosis of dementia and also those worried about their memory. We have various events going on. So we do the information programmes four times a year. Those are still virtual at the minute. So we have a new one coming up now in November and by over four weeks, we'll have four different speakers. And um, we do awareness raising events and activities. So we go to the likes of the health fairs and things that a lot of these attend as well. Uh, and it's great just to also, I think for us, to meet the other organizations like, like today as well. We do awareness raising talks um, to any groups at all, to anybody. And we do dementia friends sessions um, where we do um, a workshop with, with anybody. And at the end, they can become a dementia friend, get the wee badge to say they are a dementia friend. Um, we have our support line, which is open three late nights and it's open a Saturday and Sunday, which is great. And it has been a lifeline for some people. We have Talking Point, which is on our website. And again, people can connect with other people with dementia or cares and chat to each other there. We have Singing for the Brain starting a new year. So I'm excited about that. It's been in Belfast and I think it'll be coming to Antrim. Um, I think it'll be the Antrim area. So that'll be great. And that's for cares and people with dementia as well. You don't have to be a singer. Um, you just have to enjoy music and you can listen, you can sing, whatever. But again, it's just the getting the group together. We have dementia support groups. So we have the virtual one and we have a face-to-face -face one as well now for CARES, which is fantastic. I have people from all over the Northern Trust coming to that group, which is great. We do volunteer and fundraising and campaigning. Uh, and we also have companion calls I forgot to put on there as well. So we um, can have that service where somebody can get called uh, once a week um, for companionship. And that is our uh, details there, the support line, the Northern Ireland website and my website um, or my email address and telephone number. Valerie, thank you so much. That is really great. I know that for us here at Agewell and Connect North, we do refer into you quite a lot. So thank you. Um, now we're going to move on to Sharon, who's going to tell us about the RNIB. We got Sharon. Sorry, I forgot to take my mute button off. <laughs> no, you're fine. On you go, Sharon. Hi there. I am Sharon McClure, Community Access Worker within the Royal National Institute of Blind People. Uh, and I cover Lauren Carrick, Newton Abbey and Antrim and provide support for those living with any degree of sight loss and their families um, to live the life that, that they want to lead. And we do this by providing practical and emotional support uh, with the aim of increasing their confidence and overcome and the isolation and um, loneliness that is so much associated with, with living with sight loss. Um, how do we do this? Well, we have groups, we have many, many activities going on out there in the community, um, which blind and visually impaired people are more than welcome to come along to swimming groups, social support groups, sports groups, reading groups, tandem groups, everything that you can think of. Um, and with at the minute we're working along with Sam with um, the singing group. Yeah. Um, we also try to educate the general public and other organizations on the importance of looking after their own eye health um, and having regular eye tests and break down barriers that society has put in place for people who have all kinds of disability um, um, but especially obviously with sight loss and we would campaign and lobby government for changes and what have you. Our, also, our services also offer um, what we call our ECLO services, eye clinic liaison officers who are in all the clinics, um, tech support, the employment team. Um, children and young people team where we um, work with our young people and their families and encourage them through confidence building courses and days out and things like that. We also provide online courses with for building confidence um, called Living Well with Sight Loss and we encourage people who are newly diagnosed to come on to those courses and they learn all about benefits and what have you. Yeah, thank you. That's great, Sharon. Um, and I have just noticed that you are in fact the winner of our 
one of the very first one of these so you this will be bringing oh. its way to you in the post Rhonda, oh thank you <laughs> Rhonda you were just pipped at the post there you were just that few seconds too late sorry so well Rhonda, done, I'll, share it with you. <laughs> I'll send you up a bit <laughs> Okay, so now we're moving on to our very own Jenny, who is going to tell us about the age well handy person. Super, I've just timed myself here. Um, thank you so much, everyone. So our handy person service that many of you will be aware of um, is delivered in the Mid and East Antrim area. It's funded by um, Community Planning Partners in Mid and East Antrim, which means we're able to deliver um, this for £10 per hour for older people um, living in their 60s in the Balamina Lauren or Carrick Fergus areas. So um, what our handy person can do um, is small home repairs. Um, so anything, uh, any of those small jobs around the home, um, which can include um, the likes of um, home security, um, so fitting of solar lights, uh, the fitting of key safes to allow for care packages to be put in um, put in place. It can also include um, fitting additional door bar and chains for additional security at home. Um, and as well, we're seeing an increase now actually in older people um, having ring doorbells and, and door cameras and things like that fitted. Um, and again, quite easy to buy. Um, in the town centre but having someone like our handy person come along to fit it for them makes it all so much easier and um, so it's up to a maximum of three hours um, per visit so you can get quite a lot done um, in that time which is amazing and um, it does exclude painting decorating gardening plumbing and electrical um, and just because they are specialized um, services so our handy person is actually a joiner by trade so anything woodwork related is great um, and it's great to pull together a list of things uh, before he comes out um, and that can be really things that are very simple to maybe um, you and I or, or most of us on this call but for an older person um, it can be a great help to have someone to do things like that so it can be maybe changing light bulbs it can be tuning TVs it would amaze you how many TVs our handy person tunes as well and um, fitting curtain rails hanging up pictures he can also do small areas of power washing um, externally and that would be for um, if it was um, a health and safety risk maybe if the area was kind of green or mossy, use small areas of power washing and patios. And you can also clean guttering at bungalow level as well. Um, and to make a booking, you can just contact the Edgewell office um, and make a request for our handy person. Thank you so much, Jenny, and well done for time on yourself. Don't know how you managed that. <laughs> um, so now we're going to hear from the Community Health and Wellbeing team, and it's Murray. Uh, good afternoon, folks. And yes, Jenny done very well with the time in there. Um, just to make bring to your attention the services we offer at the council. Um, there is a range of services um, around energy efficiency and home safety. Um, with regards to home safety, we offer a, a free home safety check for those aged 65 and over um, for vulnerable adults and children or uh, those uh, families that have a child under five. Um, what that means is a home safety officer will come to the home and carry out a, a relaxed, quick and informal risk assessment of the home. Um, we'll look at things like fall risk, uh, risk of burns and scalds, blind, safe, uh, blind cord safety, etc. Um, we can provide free equipment where necessary all with the aim of keeping um, the householder as safe as possible. Um, we generally get referrals from various agencies, such as the Trust, from MEAP, etc. But we can take uh, referrals direct from members of the public, as long as they're a resident within the uh, borough area. And they just need to ring us and we can, uh, as I say, provide that service. Um, in addition, we, we also provide a, an energy efficiency uh, service. It, it's well accepted now that uh, a warm home is a healthier home, both physically and mentally. It's more conducive to good health. So as a result of that, we can visit homes to offer advice and again, some equipment on how to keep the home as warm as possible. Um, as you can see, those are contact details. 
and we welcome referrals from all suitable agencies. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much, Murray. Um, I'm hoping now we've got Marina from the PSNI um, Multi Support Hub. Yes, you do indeed. Hello, everybody. Excellent. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Sergeant Marina Wickham Thomas. Um, I'm I'm the sergeant in charge of the K District Support Hub. You were probably expecting uh, one of my support workers on today, but unfortunately she sends her apologies. She has been um sent into court today for um, a high profile trial. So um you've got me instead. So that you know, just to quickly I could speak for days on the support hub and the work that we're doing in K District is very, very specific to K District. And uh, the support hub is essentially a locally steered mechanism for collaborative decision making with the overall ethos of, of placing with the community. So it's very uh, autonomous to K District. Um, and the reason for this is a third of all of our calls for service involve someone who is deemed as, as vulnerable. Um, and really what we don't want to do is we don't want to duplicate effort and um, we want to work with our partner agencies to protect vulnerable persons. And also, you know, the key to this uh, is early intervention to improve a person's well-being. Um, again, avoiding that duplication of effort and, and um, reducing the impact um, of serious harm or risk to people. So we manage risk and risky behaviors to prevent significant harm. Uh, and also to prevent people having to constantly repeat their stories. So we work with community, statutory and voluntary organisations to achieve this. And it's very person centred and partner enabled. Uh, we're seeing a, a huge demand at the minute for uh, support around people living with dementia and Alzheimer's and also our repeat victims of that would be our, our, our repeat victims of over 60s. Also a huge demand in uh, relation to addictions and problematic behaviour um, associated with loneliness and isolation. So um, there's a, a huge amount of work we do. And as I say, I could probably talk for a week, but um, you'll probably have Joanne's contact details on there. Those are the partner agencies that we work with on a daily basis. Joanne's contact details are on there. Great. Feel free Thank to you. give her a shout. That's brilliant, Marina. Thank you so much for coming on today in place of Joanne. Thanks again. Um, now we're going to hear from Michalina, um, who's going to tell us about the One Plus One project with the Inter-Ethnic Forum. Hello, everyone. My name is Michalina and I'm Polish. So I work for One Plus One project, which is mental health support worker. Uh, this project has been created to three different uh, most common communities in Northern Ireland. And it has been founded by public health agency. So one worker is working in Belfast. The lady is speaking Chinese language. So mostly she deals with people who speak Chinese. There is another girl in Danganon in STEP organization. She speaks Portuguese. So mostly she is accessible for, Portu for people from who speak Portuguese and myself, I'm Polish. So I, I speak Polish as well, but also I can speak sometimes uh, Slovakian or Czech Republic. We can understand sometimes each other. So, so it's, it's great if, if we communicate uh, here. And uh, sometimes if there is people who need my service and they speak English, we can also meet each other and, uh, and to support this person but but very very often my clients are polish and i see them in one to one basis like face to face and they are sometimes very lonely adults uh, they don't speak english they don't have very good uh, computer skills and sometimes they they experience difficult time because they have children with special needs and they need a lot of explanation and encouragement. Um, so mostly my, my work is like uh, uh, to be bilingual advocate for them. Sometimes I have to interpret or translate some letters, documents. I try to empower them and be also like a listening ear, uh, try to do as much clarification I can, help them with uh, sometimes universal credit, retirement scheme, PIP, uh, GP registration, 
or also support them with any other benefits. Um, Thank you very much, Michalina. That was great. I know I've definitely used your services before and you've helped me out. So thank you. That was good. Um, sorry, we need to move on now to uh, Eugene, who's going to tell us about Connect North. Thank you. Yes, I'm the... My name is Eugene O'Gowan. I'm the Connect North link worker for Mid Ulster. There are uh, on ongoing link workers across the whole of the Northern Trust. And our key uh, aim is to take people on a wee journey from where they are to a better place in their lives. And we can do that by uh, assisting them with different uh, help and support. One of the main things there is his benefit checks and financial questions, but this can also be general form filling because um, particularly older people get sort of a block if there's any form or PIP or they're looking for a blue badge or anything like that there. So we would help people with form filling. I don't personally do it, but I refer them to others around my area who can do it. One of the other major parts of our program is to direct people who may be feeling lonely or isolated to various social opportunities. Again, we normally try and get these to a community hub within their own community so that it's something maybe that they've always heard of and they've always wanted to go, but they never got around to doing it. So I try and encourage them to go along, and in an extreme case, I even take them along. But it's about getting them out and trying to get them as integrated as they can. Uh, we also provide support around specific illnesses. So this could be anything from AMS to Alzheimer's, arthritis, any of these things here. There are loads of support groups around the country. Uh, as you hear from today's talks, there's lots of things there. But most people don't know that these issues are and support groups are available to them. So it's my role to try and connect them with that there and try and get them a little bit of specialist support for whatever their uh, issue is. We also support people on an ongoing issue with housing issues. Now this can be pretty straightforward if it's with the housing executive. Obviously it can be more challenging with uh, um, the uh, private landlords, but all the details, all the various Connect North link words are up there. Give any of us a buzz and we will try and help you in any way we can. It's about taking people on a journey. Thank you. That is excellent. Thank you so much, Eugene, for doing that for me. Um, so we've had a few people saying Connect North in the chat. So it's not going to be in the Connect North slides, but I'm glad that everybody is listening and just are all awake. So you need to keep your eyes peeled for the logo in non-Connect North slides. So there's still two of my little reindeers up for grabs. All right. So we're moving on now to um, Nicola, who is going to tell us about Impact Age Well. Hi, I'm Nicola. I'm one of the Impact Age Well officers um, and I'll be giving a wee overview of the Impact Age Well project. Um, so as part of the project, um, the Impact Age Well officers go out um, to do home visits with service users referred into the project for a period of up to six months. The criteria for the impact age well um, is for anyone 60 years and over living with a long term health condition, which is listed on the screen um, and registered with one of the GP surgeries we work in partnership with in the Larn, Carrick or Ballymena area. During the support, um, the Impact Age Well Officer will discuss key topics uh, using the Impact Age Well Plan, including home, health, well-being, future and community. Um, and from those conversations, then the officer can make onward referrals or signposting to other organisations and support. These visits, um, they're great because they allow the individual time to discuss things which are important to them and to ensure that they're familiar uh, with the support pathways they can avail of in their local community. It's a holistic approach, ensuring that their social needs are on par with their medical needs. Um, and we can link them in with a range of referrals, such as home safety checks, finance and benefit checks, other community and voluntary organizations and with health profession professionals. As part of this model, uh, we work in partnership with the GP surgeries, social work teams and community pharmacists. 
support is always personalized um, to the individual um, and it's about encouraging that independence. Um, and we always, I always say when I'm out on a visit, like act as a link uh, between the service user um, and putting them in the right direction um, to support um, with their health and well-being. Um, so there are different impact age well officers out um, across uh, Midney Centrum. Um, so the details um on the next screen I think they are for um or well Sophie um but you can give us a wee call um to the office if you've any more questions or any of our socials or uh, website thanks for listening thank you that's great Nicola thank you so much you forgot to mention that you were the poster girl there for impact on that slide <laughs> um so yes now we are going to hear from Elaine Hannah who's going to tell us about Diabetes UK Hi there, good afternoon everybody. Um, I'm Millian Hanna, I'm the Diabetes Engagement Officer at Diabetes UK here in Northern Ireland. Um, so delighted to be here this afternoon to share some of the information of the support that we offer here locally. Um, so as you'll see on the slide here, um, there's a range of support that we do offer. We're the leading charity um, supporting those who are living with or impacted by diabetes right across the UK. But locally here within Northern Ireland, we offer a range of supports. So some of those are our online peer support. Currently, we are running online support sessions on our Zoom platform for people who are adults or adults, sorry, that are, are living with type 1 diabetes. And also we are running currently a women's or a, a women's health session as well across a range of women's health topics for women as well who are impacted by diabetes. UK-wide, we offer our website and our support forum and a learning zone. Um, there's a wealth of resources on our website. What I would say is do check it out. Or if you are working with anybody or know anybody that's living with diabetes, signpost them um, to your website where there's a host of resources from our podcast, our learning zone, our website um, and the shop where also they can order free resources um, themselves. This year, we launched a podcast and a locally grown podcast here within Northern Ireland, which was great for us to have that local, local voice and um, for people who are living with diabetes. And again, information on that is on our website. We offer family support and that looks like um, going to W5 for the day or more recently, we went to Share Village and that is inviting the whole family to these sessions because we know it's not just the person or the child that's living with diabetes that's impacted, but it impacts the whole family. So these are family events that everybody can get together on. The parents can connect with other parents, connect with healthcare professionals, and for those children with diabetes, meeting other children as well, who knows what it's like to, to live with diabetes and gain that, that bit of peer support. We've our Together Type 1 service that is for 11 to 25 year olds, and they offer a range of services from online support, fireside chats, um, I'm going to move on really quickly because I know of Live Well Hubs that I really want to talk about that's in Balamina. Um, we have our Live Well Hub supports uh, in Balamina. We have a one-stop shop that meets in Ballykeel Business Centre on the first Wednesday of the month. There's the information where you can get hold of us. And if you do want any inform more information on the hubs, please do get in touch with myself. So thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Elaine. That was great. Um, now we are going to hear from Julia, who's going to tell us about the Midden East Antrim Community Advice Service. Okay. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julia Cleland. I'm the manager of Midney Standard Community Advice Services, uh, previously known and probably better still known by our clients um, as Citizens Advice. We offer free, confidential and impartial advice to help our clients resolve various issues and we cover a, an absolute wide range. Our biggest um, area would be uh, benefits and we can take clients from the benefit check stage through the application stage and right through the appeal stage with appeal representation should that be necessary. We assist with all sorts of benefit applications, universal credit, PIP, ESA, pension credit, which is particularly um, important at the minute with the changes to the winter fuel payment. And um, it's still not too late for our older population to make these applications for pension credit, even though the qualifying date has gone past because pension credit can be backdated three months, so we're still within the window. Um, and we can take referrals through for that to get these applications done uh, and in in time and hopefully get uh, some more people to qualify for pension credit. Um, we also offer debt and money advice, and we're able to help 
uh, clients manage their debts, create budgets, and to provide advice on dealing with their creditors. And we're FCA regulated in order to be able to do that. We offer advice on all manner of consumer issues, um, informing clients about their rights when buying goods and services and helping to resolve disputes with businesses. We provide advice on housing issues such as tenancy rights, homelessness, finding accommodation, unsuitable accommodation, uh, you name it, and we can advise and uh, guide clients through the various issues that they come across. We provide support and advice with employment rights, including issues related to contracts, pay, workplace disputes, and there's my 10 second warning, um, family and relationships, health, and some legal issues, and those are our contact details. Brilliant, Julia, thank you so much. And thank just you. before we move on to Scam Savvy and Kira, um, the Connect North logo was in the diabetes um, presentation there. So well done to Kim, who was the first one there to say Connect North. So Kim, can you send me a wee message just with your contact details so I can send you out the wee lint uh, reindeer? So there's one more of these up for grabs, so keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> Um, right, so now we're over to Kira, who's going to talk about Scam Savvy. Thank you, Kira. Hello, everyone. My name's Kira. I'm one of the Impact Edgewell officers, and I'm here to talk about Scam Savvy. So we work in partnership with the Crime Prevention Officer for Mid and East Antrim, and together we've been trying to come up with ways to get new and circulating scams out into the community as quickly as possible. Um, so with many new scams popping up daily, it's difficult to know which ones to look out for. And as an older person's charity, we recognise the vulnerabilities with our older people as well when it comes to scams. So we came up with Scam Savvy. So Scam Savvy is a free weekly text alert service which highlights recent scams brought to our attention. So recently they have included um, WhatsApp verification codes um, that allow scammers to gain complete access to the victim's accounts. Fake QR codes plastered over council-owned parking machines and also scams um, relating to online funeral services as well. So anyone can sign up for Scam Savvy um, just by contacting our office and speaking to a member of staff. And similarly, if you are experiencing or if you know someone who's experienced high levels of um, nuisance calls, um, give us a wee call to, to discuss adding wee call blocking devices to your landline. Um, and these can be supplied and fit at free of charge. Um, or contact details will be on my wee next slide. Um, so just give us a wee call with any queries you have. Thank you so much, Kira. That was great. Um, next, we're going to be hearing from Stephen from HNI, and he's going to tell us about Good Vibrations. Hey, hey good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you hear me OK? Um, Thank you for the opportunity, Kavita, to come along the rapid rundown and give a wee bit of an overview of our Good Vibrations Men's Health Programme. So um, working for EHNI, we were lo looking to see how we could reach out and um, could connect more with men over 50 to uh, look at, the, at their health and well-being and overcome isolation. And uh, we were able to get some funding from the Movember uh, Men's Health Charity. Um, so we've been on the go now for about a year and a half and we've been rolling out um, uh, our programme right across the Northern Trust area, right across Northern Ireland as well. And um, we, we um, look to um, support men over 50 to just have a look at their, their health, health and well-being and lifestyle and see if they could make any changes. Um, and so we, we work with um, groups and individuals as well. Um, very very grateful to the staff there, particularly at the the impact age. Well, have made some referrals to me over over the past months, and I'm um, able to go out and connect with individuals just to have a look at their their needs and see if we can su support them. Maybe to join any local groups or activities, um, or maybe to um just think about any lifestyle changes they could make, and we share a wide range of of uh, of resources. Um, and information that you'll see on the next slide there, we have our our, our men's health guide. Um, so uh, we also go out and we um, connect with the men's groups right, there, right, right, under, right, right across the um, Northern Trust area, particularly in Mid and East Antrim. They're up and just finishing off a session today with the Harryville Men's Shed. So we tend to go out and we create a safe and, and positive space for um, having a, a discussion with men and we have a um, series of videos and presentations that we use all, all about men's health 
and we have our men's health guide to give out. So um, anyone listening today, if you think of any older men over 50 that you could um, refer to us, our, our, our contact details are there. So um, please do, please do get in touch and, and refer anyone on, drop me an email, give me a call. And uh, thanks again for all your support. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. OK, now we are heading over to Parkinson's UK and it's Morag. Hi, um, thanks very much. Um, Parkinson's UK is a UK-wide charity and principally funds research and is currently the largest charitable funder of research in Europe into Parkinson's disease. It's also heavily involved in campaigning and policy um, and pushing for a, a, a better health and social care. Um, but I'm concentrating today on the support side of what Parkinson's UK does. And um, we have support groups meeting monthly across Northern Ireland. Um, in Mid and East Antrim, the group that is the, the nearest group is based in Ballymena and meets on the third Friday of every month. But we also have groups in Macrofelt, Newton Abbey, Belfast, Oma, Derry, Portadown, Newton Ards, and Lisburn. And we have uh, cafes, which are more informal meetings in Belfast, Dungan, and Derry, and Newry. Um, people don't need to register for these groups, they can just go along. They're for people affected who have the, the condition and also their friends or family members and they'll get support and information. They'll get a very warm welcome and the groups offer a very wide uh, range of activities um, and speakers and they give information, as I say, and links into Parkinson's UK. The types of activities that they offer are things like botcha sessions, exercise classes, dance sessions, swimming sessions, depending on where they are, each group will offer something different. Um, they also organise summer outings and lunches out, which are real um, social connection for people who maybe are losing some of that social um, interaction and, and it helps them to make new friends. Um, we also have online support then, things like um, exercise sessions and movement to music sessions, which are available either through our YouTube channel or on Zoom. Um, we have speak up, speak out regular speech therapy sessions, which, which um, operate on a six weekly session basis and run regularly. Uh, we have newly diagnosed sessions for people who have just had a, a diagnosis. And that's where people can connect with others and they can get information and support um, that they may need to start making sense of the diagnosis that they've just got and, and move forward to living well with Parkinson's. And all the information that we have and all the support we have can be uh, found on our local advisor helpline who will also provide emotional support and advice on all sort, sorts of aspects of living with, living with Parkinson's and I would also advise people to go to our website which has a huge amount of information on all the links that they can get to and all the information that's there. That's brilliant thank you so much for that Morag. Um, just before we move on to Rosie's Trust um, I think we have another winner it's Denise McLenaghan who has won the last Lint Golden Reindeer so send me your details Denise and I will get that out in the post to you so well done you were all uh, paying attention so um, now we're going to hear from Jane from the Rosie's Trust. Thank you Hello everyone, thanks very much for the opportunity um, to be part of this this afternoon. So Rosie's Trust, um, our main aim is keeping people and pets together. Um, we're the only charity in Northern Ireland dedicated to supporting people who are unable to look after their pets when they need them the most. So we build teams of volunteers to help with dog walking, to help with vet runs, grooming visits. We also offer fostering. If our beneficiaries have to go into either hospital or hospice care. The three groups within our community we support are older people with mobility issues, people undergoing cancer treatment, or people with a terminal diagnosis. Um, so we're, we have a presence in the Northern Trust at the minute, but we, we're open for referrals to coming through. So we're supporting 10 beneficiaries right across the Trust at the minute from Ballycastle, right down through um, Ballymena. A beneficiary would need possibly three volunteers um, on their team if a dog is needing walked. Um, and we ask our volunteers to do two visits, um, two visits a week. So we have canine support volunteers, we have fostering volunteers, people who look after the animals when the person is in hospital. We've also fundraising volunteer ambassadors. And we'd really appreciate the opportunity to link in with charities like yourselves and organizations. I've been taking notes here today 
on how I can see a link of volunteers coming through or if you would like to make a referral, we have you just contact Laura is the development officer um, for Rose Trust. She couldn't make it today, so I come on. So her details will come up on the next slide. And if it's through referral, there's someone you know within the community that you feel would need support with either their dog or their cat, um, you would contact Laura. But also if there's anyone you would know that would like would be interested in volunteering with us. Um, and also I would ask for any community events that we could maybe um, uh, attend, we would really appreciate it. So this is Laura's details. There's the um the website is www.rosie's trust. If anyone wants to get in touch, we'd appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great, Jane. Thanks for stepping in for um Laura today. Um so now we are moving on to Katrina, who's going to tell us about radius float and support. Hello, our float and support service is for over 55s who live alone who or else who live with someone else who is over 55. Um if someone is under 55 and they have an identified support need, they may be eligible for the service if they provide a support letter from a GP or a social worker. Our service is for a period of up to two years. However, if the service is still required after the two years, um, this time that can be extended. Um, once the service user has been floated off, they can rejoin the service if their needs have changed. For those that are on the service that are receiving full housing benefit, they can receive the Connect 24 personal arm for free. Um, we also complete home visits every three to five weeks and we complete support plans every six weeks. Through completing these, we can identify a person's needs and refer them on to the appropriate organisations. Um, some of the referrals we can make are to an OT, council, social services, um, the housing executive, the fire service and benefit advice. We can also help with filling out forms. Um, we hold social events, whether it be bus outings, lunch club, afternoon activities once a month and um, the referral details are on the next slide. Um, we can send referrals, they can be self-referrals um, or there is a referral form that can be filled out. If you email the email address listed then the referral form can be sent out to you um, or if you don't have time to do that you can just send a short email with the name, date of birth, address and contact details and we can take it from there. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Katrina. Um, and up last but not least, we have Katrina who is going to tell us about Agewell Adventures. Hi everyone, um, I'm Katrina O'Boyle and I'm the Impact Agewell team leader here at Agewell. And today I'm going to be talking about our Agewell Adventure service. So this service was essentially designed to encourage and build service users' confidence on using their smart pass on public transport. Um, and it really is a great opportunity to explore new places with the support of our staff members and our friendly volunteers. Um, so some of the benefits include making use of smart passes, um, building their confidence in using public transport, supporting new friendships and widening their social networks. So whether that be if they're traveling alone or with another friend, they'll meet um, other service users that may have common interests and you never know what friendships could be formed from that. Um, creating new transport opportunities to explore places they may have never even been before um, and also to empower older people to increase their physical activity with the knowledge that a volunteer is close by. Um, we do actually have a few upcoming dates. So this, um, the next one would be Balamina. It's actually changed from Uri to Belfast just due to the works going on at the minute. And that is Monday, the 14th of October, 2024. And then the Lauren and Carrick Fergus Idrill Adventures trip to Lisburn is Monday, the 21st of October, 2024. Um, and really it's just, if you feel that there's anyone that you know, or you yourself would like to join the Idrill Adventures, then please do contact us. Um, it is obviously traveling down together as a group, but then it's up to you how you'd like to spend that time whether that be going shopping, um, a coffee trip, just exploring that new town. Um, you'll see there's a few pictures here of some of the service users who look very happy to be going um, on previous trips to Coleraine. So yes, our contact details are there um, for next Monday and the following Monday the 21st. If there's anyone that you would like um, to make aware of that service, then please do let us know. Um, and booking is essential for the Agewell Adventures. Thank you. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much, Katrina. Um, so that is it. That is it. We have finished. Um, we have 20 organisations, uh, two minutes each. Lots of really good, useful, valuable information there. So hopefully you've learned something today that you maybe didn't know before. Um, I just uh, want to make you aware that the session will be available online from tomorrow. So you can refer back to it if there's something that you want to go back over. Um, and also, I want to say thanks again to Chrissy, the tech team, and Jenny, obviously, for doing the timing. Thank you. Um, so we've got about three minutes left. So I was hoping now at this stage just to get a wee bit of feedback before we go, just to see what you guys thought of the session. Um, and we're going really high tech this year. Uh, we're doing a Mentimeter. So I'm going to hand you over to Chrissy, and he's going to explain how this works. Hello, everybody. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you to get your mobiles out. If you have a smartphone, if you can get them out. And there's going to be a QR code on the screen. Everybody see that? Okay, yeah. So you can either scan the QR code with your mobile over here um, or go to the website minty.com. And, and put you'll see at the top of the screen there, put the code in that you see up there. I can't see it at the minute because uh, Zoom controls are over the top of it. So either scan the QR code or go to the website. Um, you can go to the website by opening your browser and typing in minty.com, M-E-N-T-I. So I'll give you a couple of seconds just to get in. So what we're going to do here is there's going to be two questions, um, one question per slide. So the way we want your answers are just three one word answers um to each question um so as people are joining there's 16 people on now i think we can get more than that let's let's keep it going 17 18 people i feel like a an auctioneer here 20 people let's go for the 20. so the first question is what was the most useful part of today's event so you've you'll see on your screen there now that you have three spaces that you can type three one words into so as you type those and submit them they'll come up on the screen here so we'll see live what uh what your responses are hopefully <laughs> there's some in already so we've got services information the presentations gaining knowledge um so as these words are repeated, they'll get bigger. So if somebody says information quite a lot, it's getting bigger. So basically what we're seeing here from today is that the actual information, the content of the slides is what you have um, really found useful. What else have we got here? We've got networks, we get meeting people, um, the variety of the information, the fact that it was local, um, networking opportunities, uh, support available, gaining knowledge, uh, and surprisingly, just the fact that the people have been able to get the contact details for these organizations, people have found very useful. So that's good to know. Um, and services. So I'll just give you another couple of seconds to fire answers in there. Let's see if I miss anything. Connections. Friendly. That's obviously myself you're talking about there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Variety. Awareness. Brilliant. The ability to share with colleagues, that's good, yep. Straight to the point, that's what we like to hear, yep. 80 responses, thanks very much guys, that's brilliant. Prizes, everybody loves a prize. <laughs> so I'm gonna call it time on that question. I'll give you like three more seconds if somebody's in the middle of typing something and we'll go on to the next question. Three, two, one, and we're moving on. So this question is, are there any services you wish we should have covered? So is there anything there that you were kind of hoping that you were going to find out more information about today? If there's anything that you, maybe this is your third time at Rapid Rundown and you thought, why have they never covered this? Um, no, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> so let's uh, have a couple more responses there. What other services could we be covering? Transport, that's a good one. Ha 
palliative care. That's very interesting. Yep. More services from the health trust. Yep. Mental health. Very good. Cap. So that would be Christians Against Poverty. Um, yep. Community Access. Carson Project. Carson Project is a um, group within the Bellamina area that run a couple of services, just in case you were wondering what that was. Volunteer Now. Leisure Centre Programs. That's good. Food banks, yep. Bereavement services, that's very good. Brilliant. Uh, so we get 20 responses there. That is fantastic, guys. So um, thank you very much. I'm going to hand back over to Kavita now. Thank you, Chrissy, for the very high-tech feedback. So um, I don't think I've got anything left to say, really, just to say thanks again to everybody for your contribution and for taking the time out of your day, because I know everyone's busy um, and presenting so that we could all connect and learn today. Um, we have our three winners. We've got Sharon, Kim and Denise. So I've just popped my email address into the chat function there. So pop me your pop me a wee email with your contact details so I can get your reindeer out in the post. And that's it, really. So thanks again to everybody for joining and take care and see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you.